again. I'm here showing off the progress made on week two. The focus this week has been regions so that you can control various sections of the world. My original thoughts had been on a per country basis, but I quickly decided that, that would be far too much micromanaging for most players. I mean, if you look at even just South America, there's over a dozen countries you'd have to keep track of on there that continent alone, so I divided it into several uh, distinct regions. As I mouse over the regions, you can see that they are uh, highlighted with different colors. I went with North America, South America, Africa, Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and Oceania. Um, those names probably could be a lot better. I just haven't come up with better ones yet. Maybe you'll have some suggestions. Um, also, as related to that, I worked a little bit on the UI. As you can see on the left and right, the buttons that used to be in the top corners are now on the sides. I decided that some sort of kind of techy looking uh, interface might be the best. This isn't going to be the final look, but I thought I would give an idea of what I was looking at and see what people thought about that kind of UI. As far as how the tabs work, when I click on them, uh, the buttons are exposed. Right now I only have the buttons for what is implemented, which is the sites, as I've shown on the last video, and the new tab regions. This tab for management opens up half screen. The reports tab will also open up half screen. In some cases, these tabs will need a full screen of information, and they can do so. But in most cases, half a screen so that you can have your report information on one side and all your management buttons on the other, flipping through your various reports on this half while managing on this side. So this is the new region screens to show some of the region information that's been implemented. Um, I can flip through various uh, regions here. There will be a picture here depicting the region. For now I have a placeholder. Uh, it'll show the various nations that are currently funding the foundation and our active partners. Uh, personnel can be assigned per region and these are your base types of personnel, just agents and response teams, very generic um, and represent a large variety of either uh, fully trained infiltrating operatives to generic police um, forces that are sleeper agents inside various police agencies. And so you can adjust the uh, amount of response teams and agents you are assigning to a region and doing so will increase your region's coverage uh, how much of the region they are able to adequately scout the higher your coverage the more likely you are to detect scps i have now removed the scps from being something that just pops up and boom you have to deal with it to it appearing in the background but you don't instantly know about it until your agents discover it. And so as your agents have coverage over the region, it takes them a certain amount of time to find various events. And it may be that you want to find them faster than your agents can, and there will be ways to help you scout out to figure out how to use your agents more effectively than having them passively comb the region. Response teams are there for regular um, appropriation of artifacts. The more teams and personnel that are available, the more chance they have of retrieving an artifact successfully. However, if an SCP or event is a uh, Keter class, then it's fairly unlikely they'll be able to successfully recover it. And you might have to then dispatch MTF teams to recover the object. But in normal uh, situations with safe artifacts and things like that, response teams are very capable of grabbing the artifact and bringing it back. There's also policies here. You can see that right here um, on this side, there's the option to enact the in policy, which is disabled right now because it's not selected. If I click it, um, you can see on this tab it shows me the various advantages and disadvantages related to the policy and here what the cost would be. If I flip over to North America you can see there's some new ones that I can click on. 
and view the various policies and then choose whether to enable or disable the policy. So this update mainly to show you some ideas I have with the UI and to show the concept of regions. Uh, the next update will probably be related to how these hidden events work. I will show some more details on that, although right now there's not a lot of visual on it, so I can't show it this week, because debug logs are pretty boring video material. But next week I hope to have some visual ways to show you how the hidden um, events and SCPs work. So look forward to that, and I'll catch you on the next video.